Hi, JJ here with The Art of Value. Today I'm going to talk about Microsoft's direct challenge to Google Search. You might have seen the headline in the last few days about Microsoft and OpenAI working on a chat GPT powered Bing in a challenge to Google. Now this is pretty significant, I think, and it's happening pretty fast. I've made one previous video on ChatGPT, so I'm going to put that at the end of this to go and see or in the description. And so you can see that as a bit of a background to ChatGPT. So let's get into what this news is all about. I'll break down the news into simple terms. Microsoft, it seems, is going to use ChatGPT to integrate into their search engine Bing, which not a lot of people use. Most people use Google, right? I do. It's such a dominance on the search scene, internet search. Microsoft's had a go trying to get into that area, but Google is really the monopoly by with over 90% of the search market, which is in that previous video I talked about that. But now ChatGPT, it's the first technology for, let's say, 20 years, a couple of decades that looks like it could possibly be as good as Google search for some things. It's a little bit different. And it seems that Microsoft is going to integrate it into their Bing search engine to attack Google's core business, their monopoly business. And so this is a, this is quite a big event, I think. Let's, it's going to be interesting, really interesting to see what happens. Let me talk for a second about the difference between Google search and ChatGPT. It's quite different. If you've used ChatGPT yet, You'll find that you type in a question, for instance, you get one answer and it's usually a very good answer. So it's pretty incredible. And then Google search, you of course get those links and there's advertising involved there. So that's what makes it Google's core business is that all the advertising. But now we have this incredible tool and it is incredible. It's kind of been amazing to the tech community. You can tell that tech people are really impressed with it. So you can type in all sorts of things. You can get it to write scripts, plays, get it to write home kids homework which is going to be problematic i think it's going to change the game so instead of this these uh, links that you get in google and you have to sift through which is the best one you really get the answer it's not perfect there's a lot of things that gets wrong it's pretty confident and it's wrong answers so there's a long way to go but it's got a lot of potential and we can see why as my last video was about this attack on google was it a google killer well microsoft maybe had a, has a first chance in 20 years to attack that search market. How they're going to do it is laid out in this article, which is a pretty credible article, I think. One of the other very impressive things about ChatGPT is that it can write code. And I, I know developers, coders are pretty impressed with it and are using it more and more for different things. It can't write whole complex apps, but it can certainly speed up the process as I understand it. I remember back when Twitter started, there were a lot of developers on there trying to trying it out a community of developers and that's how that kind of uh, bubbled up and so this is a significant tech advance event that I think developers and tech people are really interested in and how Microsoft is involved is they've, they've funded one billion dollars into OpenAI and they are as I said in that last video there I think they wouldn't be surprised if they invested a lot more as they can see something here that could attack Google's monopoly so that's where they stand they've been funding it to a different degrees, helping out to develop this thing and it's moving fast. And you have to wonder what Google is thinking about this right now. If you're getting value out of this episode so far, enjoying it, consider giving us a like if you're watching on YouTube to help with the algorithm. And it would give me that little dopamine hit that I so much crave. Thanks. So talking through how this might happen in practice, you can imagine in the Bing page, or if it's Google, you type in that one, you've got that one search field, you type in a query, you want the answer. So they're going to integrate. It looks like they're going to integrate chat GPT into that. So if you ask a question where it, it, I think it's highly confident of the answer, they may switch to chat GPT and just give you that answer instead of links, which would be pretty incredible. And can they, can they integrate advertising to that? Possibly. You can see how Google could this, do this too, and they must be thinking about developing a product. So one of the questions is, is it a really attack on Google or will, will they come up with a product using DeepMind? They must be they must be scrambling behind the scenes right now, you'd think, to bring something out. Of course, they'd want to make it really good. They used to have this thing, I'm feeling lucky, where it gave you just the answer, but it didn't really work so well. But this is a chance to do that, where you get just one good answer and not just search queries, queries to all sorts of things. As I said, scripts and code, travel plans, it's kind of limitless in terms of what this could do. So in terms of just integrating it into the search engine, 
Microsoft's going to be the first to do that. It's going to be uh, very interesting to see how it goes. And it's going to happen soon. That's the thing. They, they, they seem to be almost ready to roll this out. So according to this article, whether we believe it or not, they're saying that it could be rolled out as early as end of March 2023, which is really soon. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and if Google follows up with that. Can they do it? The other thing is, can people will people swap over to Bing? So, Because let's face it, Google has an absolute monopoly on search. Can they get people to switch over to Bing to try this and get them to stay there if it works? That's kind of the big question. In order to, to attack Google's search market, they're going to need people to regularly use it. So it's got to be good. I've started using ChatGPT. I've got it on the home screen of my phone, and I find I'm using it every day for questions that I might Google. I think, is this a better ChatGPT question? So we can see Bing might do that automatically. If you type in a question, it just could come back with a ChatGPT answer, or you could have a, a double field where it's either or, but I think that it seems like they want to integrate it straight in, so it just gives you that answer that one answer and maybe an alternative if it's not right I don't know it's going to be interesting this is going to happen very soon a big part of the reason why I'm excited about this to see what happens is because there hasn't been an innovation in tech for a very long time that's really excited the tech world like this has I mean you could say there's been crypto bitcoin that's that kind of thing over the last 10 years or so there have been other things there have been other things out outside of the internet like uh, electric cars and solar and those those kind of things but this is seems like an immediate impressive thing that the tech world's gone wow this is this is really going places and it's now moving fast it has been of course bubbling away in the background we've got the also the ai image things that people have been playing with so all of this stuff 2023 is going to be a really exciting interesting year for ai i think especially if this in particular rolls out soon and the microsoft behind it being one of the behemoths so it's one behemoth against another two of the big tech companies big tech there's a lot of money to to invest in this. It's not as if startups can really do this, even though OpenAI is a lot smaller. Apparently, it's valued at over $20 billion kind of on the private market. It's not a public company, of course. Maybe it will be one day. Maybe it'll be part of Microsoft one day. I don't know. This could give Microsoft a big kick along if it works, if they start to attack the Google search market. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But it's going to be interesting to see what Google's next move is. They may have something ready to go. We just don't know. Part of it, what I talked about is, will they cannibalize their own search market? Because if they have this thing that they can't put advertising on, they're going to eat into their own business. And so do they go full steam ahead to try and innovate in this area? It's the innovator's dilemma where Google's pretty comfortable in having a huge, their core business is so huge. It, Let's say it's, it's kind of one of the best businesses that's ever existed, let's face it, and it, it grew so quickly, and it's been decades before something like this came along that we could see might start eating to their market. As I understand it, Microsoft's in a very good position because some of the ways that they've been helping OpenAI is to use their servers and computational power to help with all these queries and pro the processing power that they have with Azure, their cloud-based business, and of course, Google has this too, and other companies do too. So maybe there'll be some competition develop. I mean, Google really developed a monopoly over time because it was the best product. And so maybe it'll be to do with how good the product is, uh, that classic innovation against innovation, we'll have to see. But that, but behind the scenes, Microsoft has been doing a huge amount to help OpenAI with their huge infrastructure. So Google has that as well. So we'll have to see what happens in terms of Google's comeback to this and what indeed what the product's like when it first comes out. Might be a flop, might not work, but there's still the standalone chat GPT, which, which I like, as I said, it's on the home screen of my phone. I'm using it every day now. One thing about these AI natural language models is that they need training. They get trained on data from the internet. It takes quite a long time. It's a huge amount of data. So Microsoft and Google is capable of doing that too. And it's expensive. However, saying expensive, I've seen the figure of like six million dollars, five or six million dollars to train these, and uh, ChatGPT is trained on data up to 2021. So if you if you ask about current events or anything in say 2022, it won't know the answer. It'll tell you that. So these things, hopefully over time, will be kind of real time, but very expensive and these big tech companies have got the infrastructure and the power to help with that that's why it's so hard as barrier to as barriers to entry to come in and 
compete with these things and i can see why these the the big tech companies are, are kind of monopolizing it's just interesting that it's microsoft and, and google here and maybe others meta could and apple i mean apple's got siri as i said in my last video about this i don't really use siri it's not very useful but it could be this is kind of what you want siri to be you want siri to be to just give you an answer rather than just sending you to links on the web because that's what it does. Here are some links to go and look at. You just want an answer and you want it to be a natural language answer. And I think that's the future. So I can see Apple getting into this too and other big players as well. So it's really, this is a big tech game. Training the model, five or six million dollars is really not a lot of money. That is not much from, say from venture capitalists and these big tech companies. They can, they can put billions into this without even blinking because it's such an innovative thing that they could see it's kind of the future of AI. And so, you know, they'd be willing to invest billions into this, I think, and probably accelerating from now on would be my guess. So it's exciting times. We'll leave it there. I think we'll come back to this another time when there are new developments. What do you think of this? I'd like to hear in the comments if you're on YouTube or on Twitter at The Art of Value, leave a comment. And my, my channel isn't so big that I can't reply to everybody right now. So I will reply if you leave a comment on this video on YouTube in particular, and of course on Twitter. As I said, if you're on YouTube, I'm gonna leave a link up here to that previous video, a bit of background on OpenAI and ChatGPT. And if you did get value out of this episode, consider subscribing on YouTube or in your favorite podcast app, especially on Spotify with this video as well. I'll have more about this topic in the future, more news, and I'll come back to this. So I'll see you again.